It's so nice to see all of you. My name is Sarah Hendrick and I am the Director of Alumni Engagement here at CSUB. Um, it's nice to see your faces, even if it's through a Zoom screen. And thank you for joining us for our seventh annual and first virtual Alumni Rising Runner Award Ceremony and Discussion Panel. We created this homecoming event so that recent alumni, those that graduated within the last 10 years, who are already excelling in their careers can come back and share their secrets of success with students. Who better for students to learn from than people who were in their shoes just a few short years ago. And if you hear um, a buddy, I have a snoring dog next to me. So um, this is what working from home looks like. Um, each of, so to tell you a little bit about the event, each of uh, CSUB's deans from our four academic schools, as well as the dean of CSUB Antelope Valley, chooses an alumni rising runner in consultation with faculty. This is the first year we've included recognition of an alumni rising runner specifically from the Antelope Valley campus, uh, it's something that we're very excited about. Today's is our first alumni rising runner event of this homecoming at home week. Over each of the next four days, we will honor and hear from the four other schools, alumni rising runners. And I'd like to invite all of you to attend those events as well. Those rising runners include two college professors, a business professional, and a young lawyer who has also been active in local politics. Uh, so to kick this event off, I'd now like to introduce Dean um, Doreen Anderson Fasil. She's the interim dean of CSUB's Antelope Valley. She led the selection of today's alumni rising runner, Serena Muhammad, and she did a phenomenal job, um, as you'll learn more from Serena today. Uh, so Dean Doreen, the Zoom screen is yours. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you for expanding the alumni rising runner program to include graduates, especially or specifically from our campus. Um, we greatly appreciate that. CSUB Antelope Valley has so many talented, accomplished alumni, and we look forward to spotlighting more of them in the coming years. It's important that our students at Antelope Valley are recognized for their hard work. A big thank you to the faculty and staff who nominated Serena Muhammad at CSUB Antelope Valley's first rising runner, as CSUB's Antelope Valley's first rising runner. This nominee was championed by Dr. Randy Schultz, my predecessor. Randy was appointed permanent dean of A at CSUB Antelope Valley in 2017, after 11 years of educating um, roadrunners. He is now retired. I want to send a special thank you to Dr. Schultz for his continued engagement at the Antelope Valley campus. His support is greatly appreciated. We're happy he's able to join us from his home in Oregon to introduce Sarah to all of you. So thank you, Randy. Thank you, Sarah. And I pass this on to Randy. Thank you so much, Doreen. Um, it is my pleasure to tell you about Serena Muhammad, a double alumni of CSUB Antelope Valley. She is someone whose personal story of overcoming challenges, putting her in positions to help others, has a lot to teach today's student. Um, Serena is a business service representative for Goodwill Southern California, which connects employers with people facing barriers to employment, including homelessness, disability, and former incarceration. Sabrina finds training and employment for these kinds of, uh, I'm sorry, Serena, I keep saying, Serena finds training and employment for these kinds of clients, and she's the perfect person to do it because she has a background similar to many of, uh, of theirs. But I want to let her tell you more about that. Um, we will let her tell you more about that. Uh, Serena earned an associate's degree in business administration from Antelope Valley College in 2013, a bachelor's degree in business administration and management from CSUB in 2015, and an MBA from CSUB in 2017. She has worked with the homeless on Skid Row in Los Angeles, been a job coach for people with disabilities, and helped the formerly incarcerated become productive citizens after release back into society. She says the biggest roadblock she's helped them knock down is lack of confidence, saying it's really important for people to believe in themselves. And she said, quote, I want to be that glue to support them and to cheer them on all the way to success. I know that she does that on a daily basis. 
The Alumni Association is lucky to have Serena as part of the Runner Alumni family. They will be sending her a plaque and other tokens of congratulations for being named an Alumni Rising Star. And Serena, would you like to say a few words? Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you for selecting me. I feel very privileged and honored to be supported um, by this great school. Um, I wanted to make sure that I always said we say that we're AACSB certified. And so, <laughs> and so I think um, um, I have uh, a lot to offer the world, uh, especially in the business community. Um, I've come from um, a very um, traumatic background um, through my growth here at the university. Um, I never thought I'd be in this position to where I could say thank you, um, let alone to be honored um, and supported. And so the continued support uh, from CSU Bakersfield um, um, just really humbles me. I think it's very important that we continue to work with people who came from my background who don't have the ability um, um, to overcome some of the challenges uh, that were, uh, that I had to face. And so my goal is to, you can't bring economical sustainability to your community unless you um, bring a community together first and acknowledge what is going on and to support them in um, all of their endeavors, even the hard stuff. And so I'm the one who volunteers for the hard stuff. And um, I wanna continue to uh, bring people to school, to uh, get them employed and to help them find careers and to help them be self-sustaining. That brings a very strong community to us. Thank you so much for that, Serena. That's perfect. Um, uh, what we're gonna do now is go into uh, our question time. And if you have a question, just raise your virtual hand and we'll have you unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, if you would rather put your question into the chat, just send it to Mary Coder, and that's M-E-R-R-Y. She may be the only person you can send a, a question to and, and then she'll let me know. And uh, I wanna just start off with a couple of questions myself before we get started. And um, I just having known Serena personally and watched her grow on our campus, I do wanna say that um, it just seemed like there was no obstacle too big to get in your way. And that uh, you would you would you would definitely overcome them. And I know that we had you know we had several conversations about that. And uh, you know it just like you just kind of slowly let me know more and more about yourself. And I just became more and more impressed. And I thought, wow, if every student had your attitude and your your can-do spirit, boy, we would just we would be 100% successful. We'd have a 100% graduation rate. But uh, one of the questions I'd like to ask you though is to get started. What do you uh, want students to know about what you've overcome on the road to where you are now and how you overcame it? Well, um, I'll address the big elephant in my room is um, I was incarcerated for 15 years. Um, I was caught up in a domestic um, and very violent, abusive relationship um, to where it harmed my children and in turn it harmed um, my abuser. Um, I spent 15 years in that prison and during that whole time, I wanted to decide what can I do to be better so nobody else have to go through it. Um, the um, emotions of working with uh, women in my position was just a little overwhelming for me. So I decided that I would help the community at large for those who feel disenfranchised and those who are afraid um, um, to better themselves. So when I got out of prison, um, I attempted to rehabilitate. I thought I rehabilitated because I was taking all the classes, doing all the work that I needed to do. And um, society is not as forgiving. Um, it was a violent crime. It was a voluntary manslaughter, which is unfortunate. But um, what I did learn from it is to persevere and continue to push on. And there's people out there that will partner with me and, and help me overcome um, 
those issues, those emotional issues and the mental issues and um, especially the educational issues that I was going through. I mean, I'm a black woman, older, um, with a GED and a felon. What am I gonna do? And so I decided to give back and so anybody else in my shoes can overcome what I had to go through. Those are, those are some big obstacles. And uh, you know, when, when, when I first met you, I had no idea that these were the obstacles that you were overcoming. And my, my next question is actually from Dr. Stark. It's, it's what words of advice would you give to students who face these big obstacles uh, to completing a degree? Well, what I would give to them is first off, believe in your dream. Everybody's gonna tell you no, you're gonna come across a thousand no's. But all you need is that one yes. And I get emotional because Dr. Stark is one of those people who gave me that yes and made me feel like a person. So excuse the emotion, but to overcome it, you're gonna go through emotions. You're going to go through mental challenges. You're gonna go through financial barriers. You're gonna go through barriers. Uh, Shelly Brooks would let you know. I went to her so many times just so I can stay in school because I have a learning disability from blunt force trauma. And just keep going, don't stop, don't stop, ever. Um, I took a semester off and I think that was the worst thing I've ever did because it takes a lot of energy to get back into it. And so if you have something that's working so well for you, um, learn about yourself, learn about the world, and then you can, you can walk on, on two sides of the spectrum I know what I know, and I can go around people who have been incarcerated, they'll trust me. And I can go to those with disabilities and they'll trust me, but then I can also venture into the business world and properly advocate for them. And so just, just believe in your dreams and keep going. And all it takes is that one yes, that's gonna keep you motivated. So you did that. You went over, you got past these obstacles, you, 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 know, you went from a, a, from a GED to an AA degree to a BS degree to an MBA, and then it was time to take on career. So um, what, what advice do you have to students to help them figure out what career path that they're going on after graduation? How did you know that the career that you have now is the career that's for you? Well, as my professors would know, I always said that I wanted to go into nonprofit. And so at first I was thinking the Smithsonian, the NFL, something like that. But then I really wanted to hit closer to home and grow the community. Um, you're only strong as your weakest link. What I suggest to those who are going out looking for a career, first of all, go for something that you're passionate about. Go for something that is within your skill set and to do your research, um, but not just of the company, do your research of the people who work there because um, you don't wanna go someplace where you don't like to work with the people. You don't wanna go someplace where you don't stand um, on the vision and the mission of your company. You know, um, Goodwill has, it's just perfect for me because it works with, um, it has a great business model and that is, of course, um, they have the stores, but all the money, 94 cents of all those dollars go back into the community to train people and help people. And that's my passion. And so that's what I wanna do. Find what's passionate for you. If you want to uh, go into um, um, the stock market, study it all, find out which one you're passionate about and you'll be successful. That's good. I think that's great advice for, and I think many people in this room that have careers uh, remember that, that, you know, a lot of us went into it because we did have a passion. Um, you already mentioned taking that one semester off and that being a big mistake, but what other, what, what career, what career mistakes have you made that taught you uh, the best lessons? Um, I think the biggest career mistake that I met is biting off more than I can chew. Um, often people are asking all these things of you 
And sometimes you just have the courage. You got to have the courage to say no, that I'm in the middle of doing something else. Um, or what happens is that you'll become um, very stressed and you'll forget that passion or why you're even doing your job because you're so caught up in mundane things. Um, another thing that um, I would suggest is um, to be healthy and take your breaks. It's okay to step back sometimes from things if you don't quite understand. Uh, don't rush through things and have a process. Whatever you're gonna do, have a process that's intentional and strategic. So that's my truth. So you mean take your lunch break, right? Take your lunch break, take your coffee breaks. Don't work when you go home, turn off the computer. You know, don't continue to work overtime when you don't need to. I do wanna remind the audience that if you have a question, just go ahead and put it in the chat and we will be happy to, I'd be happy to ask it. Um, so when you've gone after jobs, how did you set yourself apart from the competition? <laughs> well, I have to be honest about my background, but when you set yourself, when I'm setting myself apart from the competition, I tell them about the accomplishments that I made, but I have to do it humbly. And those accomplishments I made, how I can bring them to the table and have them work for the team. Um, another thing that um, I did is that I have a network of collaboratives that I'm connected to. I mean, it goes from senators down to uh, the guy who works at the corner store. I'm partnered with them. Um, I understand where they're coming from. I know what they need. And I'm not afraid to roll up my sleeves and um, make sure that, that those special things that you can bring with you wherever you go. So as long as you stay professional, you, you don't burn any bridges, uh, bring that with you. Uh, any uh, media spotlights, you know, this is a very virtual world now. So any of those special things that you have on LinkedIn or YouTube or something like that, those are really important things to um, let your employer see. And that will set you above um, because they're seeing your results and of your hard work. And so as long as you come with that result oriented mindset, uh, people would love to hire you. Is, I, you, you mentioned working with people, and, and I'm just curious if there's uh, if there's been any surprises in your career so far where you realized that building a relationship with a particular person, uh, you you didn't you, it wasn't something that occurred you, to you at first, but you realized what a benefit was it was to build that relationship. Yes, sir. Um, I met Mr. J. Obernoki, and um, actually, I see him weekly. You know. <laughs> And um, the last thing I ever thought is that a conservative Republican would understand um, where I come from and what's needed. And um, that is uh, very uh, surprising to me because uh, some of his staffers, they call me often to find out what we're doing, uh, what's going on. Um, and I just never thought I would be talking, I mean, really? <laughs> I mean, to me, that's a big thing because that's somebody who can do something in the community, who can make moves, um, who has a respect for his community, no matter who it is. And so I, I think that's my biggest shock on who I connected with. That's cool. Um, Jeanette, I uh, got a question. Is there a particular area within your business education that you really pull from now? Or is there an area of curriculum that you think should have greater emphasis? Um, believe it or not, I think the biggest thing is um, my work ethic. The biggest thing that I pull on is my work ethic uh, processes. I learned a uh, majority of that by uh, Professor Woods, uh, Jeremy Woods and um, Dr. Starks. Um, a work ethic and a process is very important. To do your research um, empirically is very important. And that's where I pull a lot of my information from because I like to meet employers, but I do not like to give um, employees some place to go um, where it's a setup for failure. So uh, pulling out on cultural fits, um, 
um, where an organization is going, the financial status of that organization, that's where um, I pull the majority of my information from. Awesome. Uh, Dr. Wallace would like to ask a question. He's going to ask it live. Hello, Serena. Hi, how are you? Doing great. I want to first thank you uh, for sharing your story with us. Uh, what you have shared is not something that many of us uh, would do. So I wanna thank you for that first, but I want to congratulate you uh, on winning the Rising Runner. And when you think about Rising Runner, those that are receiving this are not just ones who are accomplished in their field, but also those who have aspirations for doing greater things. What, what do you have, what's the future look like for Serena? Well, what the future looks like for me is that I would like to start my own recruiting. I would like to be able to be, give services and free services to individuals who really are looking um, to sustain themselves. But what I would like to do even more, and I would like to take it nationwide, is to show the whole world that you can see a treasure in everyone. Just because somebody has a disability cognitively, um, or if somebody has a background, you have to judge a book by its cover. And I want to be able to get that message out and be able to have people capitalize on that. And so I'd like to be that glue to keep that going and to build it and make it a larger thing. That's wonderful. And that's what my future holds is to start doing my um, own recruitment services. I have no doubt you're going to do that. I have another question from Dr. Stark. Um, a lot of today's young people have just flowed along in school and once they graduate, they think that someone will just offer them a job. Mm. What does it really take to get the job one really wants? Um, as Mike Brown knows, it took, it took me almost a year to get a job after I graduated. And so getting a job is a job. Um, and you have to look at it as such. You have to put that eight hours in 10 hours in, if this is something that you really want, then that's what you're gonna to have to do. Because an employer is gonna see when you come into interview, reschedule an interview, or when you start to articulate the results that you can bring to them, they're going to see how energetic and how focused you really are. If you think a job is just gonna to come to you, think again. Um, it's good to go to school full time, but it's even more important to volunteer um, to get into something because employers were looking for experience. Here I came with my MBA, yes, and then I was telling them I'm AACSB certified and all that stuff. But what they also asked was, well, what experience do you have? What are you going to bring to this table? You know, and that that is something that you have to do. If you don't have a job, be volunteering and continue to look for a job. And if the job is still in your field, but it's not quite where you want, or you don't see yourself growing with that organization, continue to do that job very well and to look for an additional job. But you have to bring results to the table. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah, who's gonna ask a live question. Thanks, Randy. And um, yeah, thank you again, Serena, for being here. Um, you are such an inspiration. And thank you for being brave and courageous to share your story. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar or if you were a part of a program we have at CSUB and through the CSU system, but it's called Pre Project Rebound. And it um, helps formerly incarcerated people um, finish a bachelor's degree. And so I guess my question for you is, um, you know, do you think we, we should, as a society, expand educational opportunities for people in prison? Um, and, you know, when you get out, like, you know, what are the hurdles to thinking about, for you, thinking about a college degree and finishing it? And um, I just love that you're turning a really difficult thing in your life and 
you're going to help so many people in the future who have gone through what you've gone through. Um, so just, you know, kudos to you. Thanks for being here. And, um, yeah, the kind of my question and, and comment in one, but yeah, how do you think we can expand educational opportunities for people in prison and those who um, have gone, have been in prison? Well, when I was in prison, there was a lot of people who were privileged enough um, to go to school and um, that cost, you know, and I know that, you um, we can only limit um, those that are incarcerated tuition or something of that nature. But I'm sure that there's some pamphlets or there is something that can be given to those to keep them encouraged and motivated while they're incarcerated because it's so easy to get distracted by the negative things that are in there just to survive. So you keep the, there's a saying, and I don't mind as a devil's work, workshop, you know, so just pamphlets or, or, um, maybe even old lessons that you can send, you know, to keep people motivated, um, to have somebody go into the prisons and speak about um, what they can honestly get into. Um, I had that problem when I first got out. I didn't know what profession I can get into. I was going to school to be a nurse. Surely I couldn't be a nurse coming out. Um, and it took a lot of counseling and, and it took uh, me researching to find out, well, what degree can I get that's going to allow me to be a professional and be accepted. And so um, I went into business. Um, there's, a, I mean, just look at Wall Street or the <laughs> White House or, you know, everybody, you know, um, have some sort of background and they, they have great jobs. So I went into business, but there's other jobs that people can get into, welding um, and the HVAC. They can get into these professions, but they don't know it. They need to be known. What can I do coming out of prison? Because uh, just telling them they can enroll in any class and it doesn't benefit them in the long run, it makes no sense. So um, to get into the prisons and talk to them, uh, maybe you can have some pamphlets on what's available. Uh, let them be able to see what an assessment test is because people don't have realistic ideas on, on how to enroll in college. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it, and they don't know what's really um, important um, to get in. And so they already feel they're set up for failure. So it's, it's important to give them a realistic view. Um, coming out of prison, um, I got that. So I just met these great people, and so I was able to get that. But to give them a realistic view, hey, if you did this kind of crime, you can't do this type of job or in these certain industries. It's really important to know, you're not gonna hurt anybody's feelings. There's no liability behind it, but at least somebody has a realistic chance to move forward in life. That's great advice. That's good for us to know. I have a couple of comments from some of your fan club, okay? So this one's from Shelly Brooks. Not a question, just a statement. To me, Serena is the epitome of what we look for in an alumni. She has a conscientious, and hard. she was a conscientious and hardworking student who cared about others. This is something she, oops, sorry, this is something she continues to carry on in her professional life. Congratulations, Serena. That's from Shelly. Mm -hmm. And then from Leanna, I have always felt honored to know you. Thank you for always being real. I miss you. Congratulations. Um, and this is a question from Ellie. Uh, we now have a runner alumni mentor program. During your time at CSUB, did you have any mentors that helped motivate you? Mm. Well, I have two favorites. Um, I do love you, um, Dr. Schultz, but John Starks and Jeremy Woods, so many times I was going to quit. And they were right there. Um, they did nothing out of the ordinary, but you could see their true passion for people to succeed there. And that's what I try to emulate. Um, I get tears in my eyes when I think about them. <laughs> but when you get someone who wants to change the world and want to see you succeed, changing it, and do it to the best of their ability to teach you how you can make that happen you can't get a better mentor. And I think of them all the time like that. Um, 
Another person who was a great mentor is Mike Brown. There was so many times and there's some things that I shared with him that I probably will never share with the world, but he just took it in stride and he continued to tell me the good things that life has to offer. Uh, how many people are behind the front lines or, you know, or in the, or, or in the trenches? He says, that's what students do. You grow and you learn. And if it wasn't for him, no telling where I'd be. So those are three very prominent men in my life that have changed it for the better and who strengthened me. And so they don't even know it, but I would like to say thank you because if it wasn't for them, never, never, never would have stayed in school, ever. It's just so great to hear. You know, CSUB has won a couple of awards for, you know, being the best school, what is it? Best bang for your buck. But I don't think people realize that the bang is, it's, it's the people that you named. It's the people out there that are supporting students like you that, or, or like all our students, you know, that, that uh, they're just there for them to, to succeed. And, and it really truly is, it's a wonderful place to work and to be and to be a student at. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, what, uh, what led you to pursue a graduate degree? This is from Erica Milan. I knew with my background that I had to be 10 times better than the next person. Some people take for granted on who they're related to or connected with. Some people take it for granted because they think they're smart. I wanted everyone who sees me or every employer that I went to that I took it to the end. Now, Dr. Starks, uh, he, he threw some hints about uh, 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 doctorate. I don't know, <laughs> but what I do, but I'm taking in consideration. I'm seriously thinking about it, but I just want the world to see that I can complete something. A, a, a wasn't good enough, a BS wasn't good enough. You know, it takes a master of something to make a difference and to bring ideals to it. And so I want to make sure that MBA, that's, that's nothing to laugh at. You know, it's a serious degree. And I want them to see that. That's why I pursued it. Here's a little bit, uh, another, another fan club person. This is from Cindy Zunga Prado. I'm so proud of your accomplishments. Thank you for being real. That's me. And uh, this is from Mary. Uh, what accomplishment are you most proud of since graduation? And do you have a big goal you're still hoping to accomplish? And I think you've talked a little bit about that, but go ahead and elaborate. Yes. Um, I think my biggest goal, as I said, is to help people to get employed. People go to, you have to be employed. You have to feel like you're a part of something and you have to feel like you're contributing in some form. Uh, people going to work, it encompasses all of that. And so I'm most proud of helping people feel self-sufficient. Um, I'm most proud of, of, of people being able to look at me and still feel confident enough to, and courageous enough to, to, to share with me their life. It takes courage to allow somebody to witness your growth. You know, a lot of people, they hide. And, and one thing I am, I'm a huge introvert, you know, but when it comes to advocating and wishing success on people, man, I'm going to be there to push them, but no more than they do themselves though, because you can't advocate for somebody more than they can advocate for themselves or they tend to become lazy. And the first part of that question, what was the first part of that question? Um, let's go back to, oh, what accomplishment are you most proud of since graduating? Is that people see me as, as a regular person and they don't fear me or they don't hold my past against me or they don't even know about my past if I don't tell them. They just see me as a person. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing. That's all I ever wanted. That's awesome. 
Uh, this question is from one of your other mentors. This is from uh, Jeremy Woods. She, he says, Serena, let's talk more about your recruiting plans whenever you want. So you've got a door open there. Walk through it. And this is from, John, uh, from your other mentor, John Stark. Serena, you are why we are here. And it has been such a privilege to work with you. Please let us know how to continue to support your efforts. And yes, the doctorate is still out there. I would encourage you to do that too. Um, you've taken a lot of risks in your life. And um, I, I'm, I'm wondering, is there a risk that you took early on that just made it okay to take the other risks? Like once you got through that one, once you took that first risk or second risk or whatever, where you felt like I can do this, I can move on now? I think um, the biggest risk, the biggest risk I ever took was talking about my past. Um, the second biggest risk um, that I took so I could move on was to leave the past where it is. Um, I know it sounds like I'm talking about the same thing, but it's my truth, you know, and During that time, um, I'm going to be honest, um, I prejudge people, a little prejudice in some things, and I try to read between lines. And so I started having the courage enough to listen to people's story and to really listen to it and, and to see what value I could bring to it versus um, in my mind cutting it up because that was done for me and I want to continue to share that. And so just to have the courage to 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 take nothing personally to help people grow. So I hope that answered the question. Mm -hmm. um, but courage and, and value and bringing value to people is the most important thing to me. If you, if you could go back in time um, to when you were first, let's just say when you were first leaving prison and you could visit yourself, what, what advice would you give yourself at that moment? Be honest, be courageous, and don't stop. Here's a good one. What's the worst piece of career advice you've ever received? <laughs> I think, <laughs> well, there's two things. One, somebody told me to go into fast food and try to become a fast food manager. Don't have the patience for that. Um, the second um, thing with career advice is that um, somebody told me to take something that all it takes is a certificate to get. Um, I'm kind of proud of my, my educational credentials and love to brag about it. Very proud of it. I don't discourage anybody if school is not for them, but everybody that I talk to, I encourage them to go back to school. Even the students I find jobs for, I always encourage them to go back to school and to continue to get their education. Um, so the worst career advice I took was to get a certificate and be happy with it. We're going to wrap it up here. I have one last uh, message for you, and this is from Chris. Serena has been a huge contributor to my education. The experiences enjoyed together with you and Louie, Melissa, and others will always be with me. So just so you know that. Thank you. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it back over to Sarah. Uh, I tell you what, this has just been such a pleasure, Serena, just to sit here and spend some time with you and talk with you and to see you again. And I, I can't tell you, personally, I am so proud of you. And I know that everybody <laughs> here at the Antelope Valley campus, you, you, we're so proud of you. You know, and, and you're one of the stories we love to tell is just how successful you've been on our campus. And, and thank you so much for being such a hard worker. And uh, you. we couldn't have done this without you, you know. So thank you. I'm gonna turn it over to Sarah. I think you're turning it over to Doreen. Am I turning it over to Doreen? Okay, I'm turning it over to Doreen, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I want to thank you, Randy and Serena, um, and all the faculty and staff at CSUB Antelope Valley. Um, this was engaging, inspiring discussion. Um, 
I am so impressed and grateful for you, Serena. Thank you. Um, your willingness to embrace the community and to help people that struggle and that face many obstacles. And many people I'm sure that have been listening to you today have faced obstacles as well. And they just shine listening to you because um, it's inspiring. I also think that you're a book waiting to happen. And that might be something that you consider as well um, because people need to hear this. I think what you said today is so impressive and so much needed in a world where we struggle and where people make judgments upon us. And I thank you for sharing. I truly thank you for opening up and risking. Um, and I thank you for being here. And I'm so proud that you are from the school that I'm interim dean at. So thank you, thank you. Um, and please come and see us when we can see each other again, because I, I would like to hug you and thank you. For <laughs> thank you, Alpha. I'm homesick looking at all these people that are here. Hi, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, CSUB president Lynette Selensky hmm, loves the alumni rising runner program, but unfortunately she couldn't be here today. Um, so we have a few words for her to share. Dr. Lynette Zelensky. A warm hello to our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends, and welcome home runners. Though we cannot be in the same place today as we celebrate five outstanding rising runners, make no mistake, we are together. For CSUB is not just a physical location. CSUB is a feeling. CSUB is family. CSUB is connection. CSUB is a sense of belonging. CSUB is home. As Maya Angelou once said, the ache for home lives in all of us. At CSUB, we focus on helping our students use their gifts and talents to build a road to their future, which will take them out into the world to serve their families, neighbors, and communities. But just as that road leads them away from the university, it also leads our alumni back. This week, we celebrate that return in spirit, if not in body. And we welcome our runners back into the warm embrace of our extended family. The five amazing alumni we are celebrating this week are called Rising Runners for a reason. They are climbing a ladder of success, and as they climb, they lift others along with them. Each school will celebrate its own rising runner at separate occasions this week. But I want to recognize each of our rising runners before the entire CSUB community. The Antelope Valley campus recognizes rising runner Serena Muhammad, who received her Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Management in 2015 and Master of Business Administration in 2017. Serena is giving back by serving as a business service representative for Goodwill Southern California. The School of Arts and Humanities recognizes rising runner Dr. Jamal Wright, who earned his Bachelor of Arts in History in 2015, Master of Arts in History in 2017, and Doctorate in Educational Leadership in 2020. Dr. Wright is an Associate Professor of History at Bakersfield College. The School of Business and Public Administration recognizes rising runner Bailey Cook, who received her Bachelor of Science in Business Administration in 2018. Bailey is a subcontract specialist for Northrop Grumman. The School of Natural Sciences, Mathematics, and Engineering recognizes rising runner Dr. Nick Toothman, who earned his Bachelor of Science in Computer Science in 2010. Nick went on to earn his Doctorate in Computer Science from UC Davis in 2020. Dr. Toothman is an Assistant Professor right here at CSUB. 
The School of Social Sciences and Education recognizes rising runner Alex Dominguez, who earned a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science in 2017. Alex received his Juris Doctorate from the University of Mississippi Law School in 2020 and is an Associate Attorney here in Bakersfield for Klein, Dinatelli, and Goldner. Thank you, Rising Runners, for sharing your knowledge, your talents, and your light with the communities you serve. And a special note of gratitude to the faculty and staff who helped you discover the magic within you. Here's to you, runners, and here's to never forgetting your way back home. Congratulations. Well, let's give Serena a round of applause, everyone, virtually or in your using your virtual hands. Um, thank you all for being here, and especially to you, Serena. Um, I'm looking at you on the left-hand side of my screen, um, but just congratulations to you again. Uh, I, it's, it's been a pleasure just hearing from you this afternoon. So thank you as an introvert for being a good sport and answering questions. Um, yeah, you're, you are a lovely human and I can't wait to see what you do in the future. Um, it's great. It's been not only great to get to know you, Serena, um, but it will be great to get to know our other rising runners this week um, so that we can connect them with students um, who can benefit from insights like we've learned from Serena today. I just wanted to remind everyone that this is the first of five alumni rising runner events this week. The next one is tomorrow when the School of Arts and Humanities will honor Dr. Jamal Wright, a triple alum of CSUB and an associate professor of history at Bakersfield College. You can check out the schedule and register for any of the other Rising Runner events on the same homecoming site where you signed up for today's event. Uh, there's a registration link on the alumni website, that's csub.edu slash alumni. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and you're as inspired as I am after hearing from Serena. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Love you, Serena. Thank you, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Serena. Thank you, everyone. It's nice to see you. Congratulations, <laughs> Serena. Thank well you. done. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm trying to save this 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 chat, but I guess not. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye.